Well, welcome everybody to another 30 minute talks and uh, thank you again from wherever you are in the world for joining us. Um, we uh, absolutely appreciate your, uh, your time in, in joining the show, your, your support of the show. And we hope, as we said before, that everybody's keeping safe and well, no matter where you are in the world. And uh, welcome uh, Professor Hobson from uh, Malaysia. Hi, Perry. Well, good afternoon. It's a lovely day again here in Malaysia, but I've had a very busy week. So I've been Zooming around the world. In the old days before COVID, I used to actually get on things called aeroplanes. Don't know if some of you remember those things. Uh, now I just uh, get to go virtually. So this last week I've been virtually in India. So I was speaking at Amity University in India on their, their conference on the new normal. Uh, and so that went very well. And uh, so that was a great experience. And this morning I've been in Vietnam speaking at the ICEF 2020 conference on the from over tourism to no tourism and the impact. So uh, that's what I've been up to here. So not just been in Malaysia, I've been virtually some other parts of the world, Alan. Thanks, Perry. So uh, with us today, is it you or is it virtually you? Uh, it's still the real me. I've, I've yet to replace myself, but I'm working on a chat module. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. What about yourself, Dr. Andy? Uh, and I'm happy to have, this is our 32nd program and we're very happy to have John with us today. And, and John is in Poland, so I'm, I'm half Polish. So I was very happy to hear John was gonna join us today. And that's an exciting thing. I've only been to Poland once. It was a wonderful experience. I was in Warsaw and a couple other places, uh, but that was a long time ago. So I have to come visit John again in the future pretty soon, I hope. Thanks very much, Andy. And, and welcome as uh, Andy's just said, John, thank you for very much for joining us again. Thank you again for being an academic partner. And uh, we look forward to your presentation. Please say hello to everybody. Pleasure, gentlemen. Wish I could be there with you on face to face, but we'll take this for now. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, John. We look forward to the presentation shortly. And uh, let's let's now formally thank our academic partners. Perry, why don't you you start off by thanking um, some of the, our academic partners? Of course, we know the show would not be uh, around without the support of the academic partners. Absolutely, Alan. And I must say, uh, we, we are a great debt to our academic partners. And again, students who are uh, enrolled with our academic partners can get certificates. Um, so I'm just going to thank, uh, to start off with uh, UNLV. Uh, the Harar College of Hospitality, our friends, the, the part of Philippines chapter with uh, Asia Pacific Cree, and of course, HOSCO, which is where our presenter has come from today. And not forgetting my colleagues at Sunway University here in Malaysia. Thank you very uh, much, Perry. And we, uh, we, as we did last week, I think what we'll do is spread up the thank you of the academic partners throughout the show. And so we'll come back to that slide a little bit later on everybody. But uh, again, thank you very much for the, the kind support and the continued support of our academic partners through what, 32, think 33 shows today. And uh, as has become a little bit customary with uh, the 30 minute talks, we have a 90 second segment, not only last week, but maybe even a bit of a, a, a prelude to today's show. So yeah, 90 seconds. Welcome to another 90 seconds presented by myself, Alan Williams. Today, I'm going to consider domestic tourism as a strategy for post COVID-19 recovery by sharing with you some of the ideas recently published by the UNWTO in their briefing note, Understanding Domestic Tourism and Seizing Its Opportunities. In 2018, an estimated 9 billion domestic overnight visitors were recorded around the world, of which well over 50% were in the Asia Pacific region. Domestic tourism, by definition, comprises the activities of a resident visitor within the country of reference. In OECD countries, Spending on domestic tourism is three times the amount generated from inbound tourism. Many of these countries are now recognising that increasing domestic tourism offers significant opportunities to restart tourism post-COVID-19. The promotion of domestic tourism is in many cases the first step to restart tourism. In Australia, this is expected to be followed by initiatives intended to attract international tourists, most likely in the first instance from within the travel bubbles that Australia is seeking to establish. Financial incentives are amongst the most common measures adopted by many countries to stimulate domestic tourism. For example, the government of Thailand announced it will subsidise 5 million nights of a hotel accommodation at 40% of the normal room rates, with certain caps on the room rate and maximum spend. The second most common strategy is developing domestic marketing and promotional campaigns. For example, in New Zealand, citizens are encouraged to do something new New Zealand and the government has allocated 1 million New Zealand dollars for this domestic campaign. Here's a quick preview. 
Plateau Hut. It's one of the most beautiful spots in New Zealand, and that's on my to-do list. Go in a forest and see a kiwi. Taking them to the snow, that would be magical. I want to go to Rotorua to see those mud pools. There are a number of additional case studies contained in the UNWTO report. I would encourage you to consider these to help kickstart tourism post-COVID-19 by seizing on the many domestic tourism ideas and opportunities available. Thank you for watching another 90 seconds. And there we go, uh, the 90 seconds that we ran last week. I think that's um, a little bit of an idea about the, the importance of domestic tourism versus international tourism, and that domestic tourism might be seen as one way in which we, we might rebound from um, the COVID-19, or in fact, um, rebound after COVID-19. But uh, I guess we've mentioned many times before, the view is that COVID-19 is going to be around for a while yet. Any thoughts on, on that, Perry or Andy? Yeah, it's just, I think it's very common for many people in their own country not to take advantage of their own attractions. I, I, I grew up in New York and I never went to the Empire State Building until I was a, I came back as a after college and after a few years. So, you, you know, take advantage of those things that you have. And, and by doing that, you're supporting your local industry. Very important these days. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely, Alan. I, I agree with that. And I think uh, this gives an opportunity to, to do things more uh, locally. I think for, in many cases, people are overlooking the local attractions just because something was further away it just seemed more exciting to go to, et cetera. And, you know, we, we've got to think more environmentally here longer term as well. But uh, I think we need to support local industries. And I think what you've seen there from the ads in uh, New Zealand, Thailand, uh, different countries are rolling out different campaigns. So uh, for many destinations, this is a, a good way of keeping people employed, keeping the industry going. Uh, uh, while we while we wait for this vaccine to roll out and uh, hopefully get things uh, moving again internationally. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, uh, Perry and Andy. And I think that's that's a nice segue into uh, introducing John, who's our uh, guest speaker from Hosco today, because um, uh, <coughs> John might even have a view on um, you know applying for jobs, whether that be virtually or in person, and where most of those those jobs are no longer offshore, but in in your own country of residence and. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity available uh, in your own, uh, as much opportunity available in most cases in your country of residence as what there might be offshore. So on that note, um, uh, John, thank you very much again for joining us. And we, we look forward to your presentation, helping you prepare for the recovery with upskilling connections, jobs and online learning. Just a bit of background for everybody on John. He's the director of development for HOSCO and HOSCO is the world's largest hospitality network. And John's been known to Perry and Andy uh, and myself for some time now through the, the ICE connections. And many of you would know, and many of your institutions are members of the ICE. Um, Hosco's network uh, and all of the online courses, learning resources, jobs and connections and students and alumni that they have, that's what John will be speaking to us about today. But he's also going to be specifically sharing some thoughts about providing you some best practices on tips on boosting your digital profiles and your personal brand which in this day and age is absolutely critically important. And then John will also present a little bit about Hosco's new relationship with Lobster Inc. that makes their award-winning and widely adopted online industry training resources available to hospitality schools. Um, and it, I, I'm not sure if your school's using those resources, but you, may, you might be, and those of the, you that are not, uh, this might be an interesting presentation for you. Lobster Inc. training has been adopted by over 1 million registered uh, learners in some of the world's leading hospitality brands across 140 countries, so that it's it's a, it's around the world already. But more about a Hosco and Lobster Link uh, through John uh, John's presentation. John, welcome. Thank you, guys. Great to be here. And like I said, keep this up. I think it's a great tool for everyone to have to keep up to date with the latest trends. Yeah. Thank you. And on that note, uh, if you'd like to load up your presentation, and uh, we, we look forward to to sharing it with you. Thanks very much. Let's get, let's get rolling. Okay. Let me just share my screen, or let me not share my screen, actually. I'll just say hi first. Um, hi, everybody. I'm John Lohr, as uh, Alan mentioned, I'm Director of Development with HOSCO, the Hospitality Network. Um, I've been doing this for over five years, helping HOSCO build up pretty much from ground zero. And it's allowed me to get to know wonderful gentlemen like Alan, like Perry, um, like Dr. Andy, um, but also to get to know people like you. I've given lots of virtual presentations to the classrooms of our partner schools we have, a couple different associations. And look, I'm not an academic, I'm an industry guy, but I work in the world of academ academia because of the partner schools we have at Hosco. We're over 400 of them. So for today, I really wanna to focus on what we do best, which is connecting talents with employers, 
You are a talent, an employer is an employer. And to do that, we've built the platform, which is HOSCO, which by the way, stands for Hospitality Connection, HOSCO, in case you forget, yeah. And so look, over seven years, we've been helping talents connect with employers. Currently, there are 1.5 million hospitality talents, which are made up from over 50 countries around the world. You can find students from hospitality schools, professionals in the industry, managers in the industry, really the whole myriad of hospitality on HOSCO. But you can also find a whole lot of employers. And yes, I know right now it's a very difficult time. But trust me, the employers are putting their own mise en place into place. And from the employer perspective, it's about planning for the recovery, just as much as it's planning recovery for you. Employers on Hosco are making sure you know their brand and you're thinking about this area or this company when the recovery comes. Because I'm sure you'll probably see, and probably Alan and Perry and Dr. Andy have talked about it before, we anticipate a massive hiring boom as soon as there is a sure path to recovery happening around the world. And that basically means, as I like to say, um, as an American, you can write your own ticket, right? You will have so many options available because there will be demand up to wazoo, as we say, yeah? But the question is, is how are you gonna be preparing for that great recovery? And that's, I think, where we come into play. We wanna help you create a digital profile, have your digital CV in a hospitality exclusive network. So you can network with people all around the world, whether they're Filipino, Malaysian, Swiss, or anybody, so that you can find jobs directly, but more importantly, so you can also research companies. I'm not talking about just where we started and what we do. I'm talking about the DNA of a company. Get to know the company, what they're looking for, who works there, and maybe even members on Hosco who can help you get that job, right? And finally, we had created a new pro program on Hosco, which is courses. So you'll be able to actually look for short courses or full-time bachelor or master programs all in one space without going net website, 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 website. So without further ado, I'm just gonna present you a couple brief slides. So a little bit of PowerPoint, sorry. Um, and I'm gonna show you some trends we've seen from our employers on when they think the hiring process really will come back. And then I'm gonna just jump right into the network. So apologies for jumping from page to page, but I'm just gonna show you Hosco. I think the best thing is just to walk you through the platform and how you can use it. So now, I will start my presentation, if you will, yeah. As I said, Hosco is a global hospitality network. Our vision is to empower hospitality industry by connecting, inspiring, providing opportunities for all its professionals all around the world, yeah? Um, this is a global network. We're bringing the best hospitality schools, talents, and employers together in one online space. And frankly, that had never been done before. Um, seven or eight years ago, when we started this thing out of Geneva, Switzerland, they, we found that there were groups on Facebook and groups on LinkedIn, but no dedicated network. And as we're one of the biggest employers in the entire world, it's probably good to have a dedicated network. Yeah. So Hosco's for people who are global, who have a passion for hospitality, and who understand the value of networking. Right. So we got 1.5 million activated people on Hosco. We get 600,000 visits per month. And again, before crisis, we had 260,000 monthly active users. Of course, that numbers come down a little bit because people are hesitant about thinking that they're jobs. But when they come back, we expect these numbers to be at the level and if even higher um, on the network, right? So I talked about data and I think data is important because it puts things in perspective. Let's talk about a little bit of data, which we gather through something called the hospitality pulse. The pulse is something you can find on Hosco. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But we asked some questions. We said, recruitment predictions, when you plan or expect to hire again? And keep in mind, we did this through April, May, and June. And then we topped it off in September, which I'll show you in a moment. But overall, remember, back in these times, 38% of respondents expected to reactivate their recruitment plan during this year. Hmm. Well, I believe it's November of this year, and I know that's not happening. And that's understandable because the industry has adapted with the data available. Even our end at Hosco, we thought this will be a six month issue and everything will be back to normal and it's not, right? Now we're seeing that the pushback of recruitment predictions is coming into Q2 of 2021. And hopefully that stays and it does move into Q3, Q4. Again, with the presence of the vaccine, which you know is now being rolled out, confidence is coming back, but things can change as we all know, right? 
So the question was, is when do you plan or expect to hire again? The latest data says now from <clears throat> around 100 plus employers who responded to us Q2 of 2021. Yeah, headcount recovery. When do you expect to reach a normal headcount pre-outbreak regular operations and team volume? Well, 22% by the end of June said they believe that they'll regain their headcount in 2020. But again, we're at the end of 2020. So now it's looking into Q1 of 2022. Now, don't let that scare you because headcount doesn't necessarily mean the same positions, right? It just meant that where we would get from where we came from. But this pandemic is also showing new opportunity, new positions being quickly created in the industry as well. But it done, again, just goes to show that industry is reacting to the latest data. Like I said, this is all called hospitality pulse data and it can be found on Hosco. So what the companies told us is their clear priorities are financial management, staying afloat, workforce engagement, making sure their people still love and uh, with their company, even if they are furloughed in some cases, and workforce health and safety, and especially making sure government groups are lobbied to, to ensure that funding and support is given to people when they need it. But that does vary government to government and country to country. So we know the industry is a bit on pause, but we know it's going to come back. So where's Hosco come in? Well, we believe that we are hospitality and we're your best partner for your career. So let's just have, ask a question. Why would you join Hosco? Well, you would join us to find internships and jobs. If you're looking for an internship, or you're looking for a full-time position after graduation, we have a lot of offers. Yeah? Pre-COVID-19, we had 40,000 offers available. And we expect that number to be back even more so when the recovery comes. But it's not just about finding a job. We are not a job board, right? We're not just a set it and forget it, add your CV and be done. We're a community. We're a community of global hospitality professionals. We're also micro communities of your own nationality, for example, or your own students alumni from your own school. So when you join Hall School, you belong to these subsets of communities. And after graduation, you have access to that alumni community because that is the networking aspect that uniquely is applied on Hosco compared to a general job site, right? Networking, networking, networking like a boss, right? Um, it's about making sure you connect with co the like-minded people, people with a common denominator and people who can probably help you out. But in order to know who's gonna help you out, you have to know where they are, who they're working for. You can do that on Hosco, I'll show you in a moment. And finally, we wanna help you stay updated. We wanna give you just as 30 minutes is doing new advice, new trends, and also a bit of data like I've shown you with the hospitality pulse, yeah? So these are all reasons why you should join Hosco, essentially, yeah? But in the end, it's all about you and you succeeding in your career. So let's help you nail your profile and start networking, like I said, like a boss. So I'm going to now stop this presentation and I'm just going to show you Hosco, right? So when you join, you create a digital profile. And digital profiles are probably something you've seen before on LinkedIn and other places. But ours is very hospitality specific. It's going to ask you about a myriad of things, but it's going to go into the typical things like about me, your experience, um, your education. As you can see, this is my lovely profile here, but there's a little guide on it. We have a little ticker, if you will. We help you make sure you get to 100% uh, all-star status, if you will, because if you're at an all-star status, it means the right data has been put into your profile. The more data, the more search points. If you just put I want job, please give me job and use a random picture of you, you're not gonna look that attractive to employers. But if you have one, professional photo, two, short, but very crisp and attractive about me, which causes them to read more, and three, you upload all your experience, every little element of that experience gets filtered and categorized in Hosco. So if someone was looking for me, I guess I'm senior management, which is a bit um, over the top, but we'll call it that, senior management, so looking for an American who's senior management, who studied in Switzerland, they'll find my profile. So all of this experience is so important to add because it gives you more and more touch points with an employer, right? Same with education, same with skills, the same with languages. So if and when you join Hosco, you'll find the very first thing you'll have to do is create your profile. And I encourage you to do that to as high a degree as possible. Yeah. Then you're going to find that, you know what? Let's say you're Filipino, for example. I love the country Philippines. I have many school partners there, et cetera. If you're a talent from the Philippines and you join Hosco, you'll belong to a community of Filipino hospitality professionals. There's 10,000 plus on Hosco, but automatically you also belong to the 1.7 million members on Hosco. If you happen to come from a school then, then you can also belong to the school community. 
these become your networks to get known in, right? You can connect with them, you can chat with them as long as they accept your request, yeah? So now let's talk about jobs. Right now, live, there are 10,000 plus offers on Hosco. So the industry is still hiring. I wanna make that very clear. There are still jobs to be had. Now, not at the 40,000 level we were at, but they're still be, to be had. And the way you apply for a job at Hosco is you don't just see a simple piece of paper, you know, Word document on the screen and apply. You get to know, of course, a job description, but you also get to know other jobs the company is providing. You get to know past and current employees of the company, and you could even find members on Hosco who are in the region where the company is located. So they can help you maybe find an apartment, know the best bars or clubs to go to. You have an inside access to all that because the system brings it to you in one shot, right? And you can directly apply as you wish. Yeah? And you also know how attractive the offers are to, to gauge your competitiveness. So you have jobs on Hosco uh, in all corners of the world. So I encourage you, if you're directly looking for a job, apply. But I think it was very interesting with the uh, survey we gave earlier, you may not be looking for a job right now. You may be looking to plan your job. That's where the company section of Hosco comes in. We have 7,698 uh, company profiles on Hosco. And what that means is before you apply for the job, you can get to know the employer. So as I mentioned, the DNA of the employer, the people of the employer. If for example, you may be looking to go um, to United States where well, we work with an employer that's ITN. They're actually a placement company, but and of course, remember, they work with other employers in the United States, but let's get to know ITN. You can see a, a video from Aston, the CEO, or from Tiffany, the director of operations, and you can get to know the people who went through ITN. Yeah. But if you're looking for general employers, everyone has a profile. Some have more content, some have less, but you get the inside track. And when you do make that job application, you can just say, not say, sir, I want a job, but sir, I know you're opening up five new properties in the next six, six months, and I'm interested in working in this area. Where'd you find out about that? On Hosco, yeah. That's the company section. Um, then, well, as I mentioned, with the advice section, you're gonna find videos, articles, interviews, and, a, and the hospitality pulse. This is about inspiring you and guiding you. The city guides will give you actual walkthroughs from students from hotel schools. The interviews will get top CEO interviews, which we made ourselves front and center. The inspiration is about that daily dose of hospitality advice in the industry, yeah. And as I mentioned, here's the hospitality pulse. It's much more extensive than what I shared, obviously. But if you want to use that for any of your classrooms, any academic listening, that could be really great, right? Finally, the course section. This is brand new. We just launched it like three weeks ago. So it's a way to find bachelors and masters and short courses upskilling all in one space. You don't have to go website to website to website, right? So if maybe you're looking for um, online courses, we have some courses from SHMS Switzerland, part of the Swiss Education Group. If you're a meeting person, you can take an MPI short course, Meeting Event Strategies. MPI is one of the largest associations of meeting professionals in the world. And once again, you don't just look at the course, you look at the school. So if you're maybe thinking of doing a master's in hospitality with our partner in uh, San Paul from Barcelona, get to know the school. You can see the school about us. You can get to know the community from the school and you can then make a better decision about going to study, not just based on the program, but based on the people from the program, right? And if you're listening and you're from actually a school in the Philippines or anywhere else, you can of course become a Hosco partner school, which will allow all your students to join, but then you to be able to track those alumni and showcase their success, which is always such a core piece to the marketing and the, and the promotion of a school, yeah. So I wanna end this little presentation about the new partnership we have with Lobster Inc. And as uh, Alan mentioned correctly, they are one of the world's largest training providers. But normally you could only get their training inside of a hotel. You had to be a staff member. We made a relationship that brings their training out into academia. So it allows for this myriad of courses which are done at a very high production level, but also done with behavior modification in mind. Remember, this is actual industry training that can come to the classroom. There's 1,450 lessons in multiple languages on Lobster Inc, equaling over 200 hours of learning. And there's a Hallmark Library, which covers all major areas, bar and beverage, hospitality, front office, et cetera. So everything is there. But the question, and this is where I'm gonna throw it back to the guys here, is where does it fit in academia? What I have found in speaking to my partner schools is that internships, not only a virtual internship, which can be done through actual training with lobstering courses, 
but also internship preparation. Because wouldn't it be nice to go on your internship with skills in hand rather than learning on the site? And wouldn't you give a better impression to that employer by having these verifiable industry skills as you enter the door rather than learn through the job? So Lobstering is a new partnership we have. It is um, available to schools who would like to purchase subscriptions for their students. We of course have very, very reasonable discounts made for all regions of the world. This is not an expensive thing. Basically hundred bucks a year gives you access to everything. It's like a Netflix subscription basically. And you have uh, all access for hundred years to 200 plus courses from the best uh, provider to industry. So I think that's quite valuable, yeah. But I'm gonna throw it back to the guys and like to have the discussion on the lobster rink, the fit into academia and what the future holds for virtual training and internship. Thank you all very, very much for listening to me. Please, if you want to join Hosco, it's completely free. Um, and for the school partners who are interested in being a Hosco partner, get in contact with me. Guys, back to you. Well, John, thank you very much. What a, what a, what a great overview of not only what Hosco does, but Lobster Inc. and all the add-ons. Add um, uh, absolutely uh, astonishing and much bigger network than I thought it might have been. Something you didn't, you, something that you didn't cover there for me is um, costs to students. Uh, and I know you probably uh, free. Yeah, it's, it's, free. Yeah, there you go. That's what I thought. It's important to of know course. To students that it's free. So, um, <laughs> of course, of course, it's like LinkedIn or Facebook. You join, it's completely free. Yeah. Fantastic. There you go. So uh, that that shouldn't be a reason why people don't join up. That's what we're saying, right? Yeah. Not at all. Great. Um, you, you yeah, started, as, as uh, I think you're saying. Sorry, Perry, go on. No, no, I, I, I just thought that the, um, obviously the free things is, is, is a very interesting uh, uh, angle there and a very important angle for students uh, who don't have much money and in challenging times. But that community, I think, was the interesting thing to pick up on, John, because uh, a lot of the time it's just you're posting something and then nothing much ever happens from that but it's building that community as we've tried to do across 30 minute talks. We've now got a whole range of different institutions who, who are members. So how do, can you tell me a little bit more about how that community interactions tends ten, ten to actually work in Hosco? Yeah, so when you join, let's say you're from a partner school, you're automatically part of the partner school community composed of students and alumni, right? But then based on your profile, you're automatically right. put into other common denominators, right? I'm it. If you search for Americans, you'll find Americans, you'll find Johnny, right? If you search for Swiss graduates from Lyon, Switzerland, you'll find Johnny, right? And so you can search at any time. And then if I don't know Perry, just like LinkedIn, Perry, you want to connect? Yes, I agree. We can chat back and forth virtually. We can share uh, ideas together. Um, you can maybe help me get that job, you know? And maybe you want to help me because you're a fellow alumni from my school. And we all like to help each other out who we have these connections with, you know? It, right, John. You you talked about the you know I, I like the one chart we use where people are are still hiring still hiring people, uh, but do do you think with there's going to be a pent up demand for travel when this is all over? The whole world is going to want to get back on the road. So how, what can students do to, to sort of position themselves to be ready for that? You know, you mentioned virtual internships. I think that's what you know. Describe how they can use a virtual internship to be ready for that first job when the when the when the dam opens up and everyone's going to be running around trying to travel again. Well, virtual internships is a tough thing to say because it's sometimes not the student who's in charge of that. It's the university, right? Or it's the department. And if they don't have providers who give virtual internships, they can't give it to their students. So, I mean, what I can say from a resource perspective, if a school goes on the Hosco, you can reach out to those 7,000 employers and say, hey, are you offering virtual internships? Can my students assist? And I think that the pandemic, one of the silver linings is it's brought it to the forefront. That was a pretty sideline item of virtual internship. Now it's commonplace. It's anything data entry, marketing, general sales. As long as you don't have to be in front of a guest or in a facility, you can do it virtually, mm -hmm. right? Um, what Lobster Inc. comes in is about does taking training tick the box of the requirement of virtual internships? Is taking actual industry training from Lobster Inc. the same as having that on-site experience? Now, what's to say from a, a perspective, no, it's not but it is better than nothing, right? It does give you actual training, gives you this experiential learning. And if you ever go through the lobstering programs, you'll see they're highly interactive. It's not just me talking in a PowerPoint in the background, right? These are done at very high production value. So the schools I've spoken to thus far have said, can we A, replace the internship with lobstering just now because, hey, we can't find them for our kids, 
Or B, can we make lobstering a normal preparatory course for students going on internship or for students who are about to graduate? Mm -hmm. And that's the exciting discussion which is now happening in academia, which before couldn't happen, it was only available to hotels, you know? It certainly seems like uh, uh, you've opened up a world of opportunity there, not only for Hosco, but for also for Lobster Inc. And um, you're also opening up a couple of uh, uh, key points here that are, that are initiating some good uh, questions. So we've got All a right. question here. Has there been any increase in optimism since the positive vaccine news? So what, what's your thoughts in, in Hosco since, since they've, <laughs> uh, you know, there's been a couple of vaccines that have uh, recently been um, announced. And yeah. uh, what's, what's, the, what's your view? Well, it's been extreme uh, positivity and optimism in Hosco, but we also have to keep reality in place, right? We know that just having a vaccine doesn't mean it's going to get to every corner in, a, in all parts of the world, right? But it does show a glimmer of hope, and therefore the employers, let's just say, can take that next step of actually planning for recovery. I think that everybody, from myself to employers, were completely on hold from budgets and from planning because they didn't have a clue what was coming. Now that they know, it's happening, next steps are being taken, next actions are being implemented. Mm -hmm. So yes, I think it's given a, a good bit of hope, but I still believe that uh, from a full hiring recovery perspective, we're still looking into Q4 2021, you know? John, John one more question. On, when they're filling out your profile online, you know, you have 100% all-star status. Well, you know, yeah. What what advice would you give to create a good profile? What kind of photo do they need? What kind of resume should they put on there? What what kind of statement? You know, give some. What some tips you could give them before they when they start to fill out that form? Sure. I mean, when they go and fill out the form, there's a bot, right? There's a there's a, a teacher. It'll say, hey, why don't you add this? Why don't you add that? So it'll guide you how to get to all star status. But measurable things, right? We all know that you don't want to just say, I worked at the Hilton, but when did you work for the Hilton? What position did you have? What responsibilities were under that? So the, the system kind of calculates on how much measurable information has been given, right? As we know, that's really important in CVs. Picture-wise, I know it sounds cliche, but I still believe that people should have a professional photo, maybe even suit and tie. Yes, the industry has changed somewhat, but majority is still conservative. And they don't want to see this, hey, photo. They want to see a professional um, who looks like who looks the part before they have the part, right? So I know a lot of my partner schools actually bring in professional photographers to take photos of their students to make sure they do have that look and feel. You know? You know, do the, can a student put in their student experiences or like maybe a big project they worked on in school if they, didn't, they don't have that work experience? <clears throat> yeah, there's an other section or you could add, the experience is relative, right? So they could say student and they could say projects completed. So you can customize your profile as you wish. And important to note, if you have a CV in a different language, you can upload that. Think of your profile like your file cabinet. You can add other CVs in different languages. So when the employer looks at you, he can also see those other CVs automatically. That's yeah. a good one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. It seems like there's a lot of flexibility there. And I guess there's one more question that says, once again, how is this different from LinkedIn? Yeah. Well, it's very simple. It's hospitality specific. LinkedIn is great. LinkedIn is necessary. I mean, I'm on LinkedIn daily, but if you're looking for a hospitality specific network, LinkedIn isn't it. In fact, LinkedIn probably has a, a pushback against hospitality because compared to everything else, which LinkedIn, if you kind of understand LinkedIn's business model, it's about businesses, right? Well, the businesses hiring people hire at, you know, pretty expensive level salaries and we don't work our business like that. So LinkedIn focuses on the, the big uh, businesses of the world. We focus on hostile employers. Our employers to post a job on Hosco have to pay an annual subscription. And they say how many jobs I want to post or how much access do I want to the network. But that's why we make it completely free for the members because we don't want to inhibit the real value, which is what the employer is looking for, the talents. So the answer to the question is hospitality specific. You have a community and you can also find those new forces as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that's really key, um, uh, uh, noting that it is industry specific, hospitality industry specific, and, and that's, uh, that's absolutely a key difference. And Christina, who's uh, one of our long term supporters, one of long term friends, no doubt you, you know Christina as well, John. Um, will there be a future for tourism and hospitality students given the current challenges in tourism due to COVID? How can we prepare students for future work? Nope, pack it up, close, we're done. Of course, there's a future. <laughs> of course, there's a future. I mean, the future is, is going to be bright, but it's going to be different. I think you probably talked about before, 
My feeling the disruption that will happen will be in business class hotels because Zoom has proven we can do this. We don't need to fly and have our coffee. We don't need to have our, our, our conference room meeting, at least in the beginning, right? So mice, I think, will be back even more so because of the pent-up demand. But I think business travel will be affected. And if business travel is affected, we're going to have to think about the business hotels would normally hire those employees. Will they go to more, um, more linear models of making sure there's less employees and more technology? And if they go to more technology, what are the schools doing to prepare students not in just giving the service, but knowing the systems that will be used for the service, right? So in my opinion, I think we need to have a heavy uh, promotion and push onto hospitality technologies of the future and giving the students um, courses in that and training in that, moving far beyond the operas and the PMSs and more into the new ways of checking in, new ways of uh, door key codes, everything, you know? <clears throat> and so I guess a specific question that I might have for you there is, does Lobster Inc. have uh, those types of courses that you're talking about, uh, you know, focusing on technology, focusing on emerging trends in the industry? Um, and uh, would, would, th would that be something that you'd be encouraging? Yeah. They have some, but the unique thing about Lobster Inc. is like they have PCR compliance, knowing how to handle the credit cards and they have the operating systems. But Lobster Inc. is an open source platform in a sense. So, for example, if an employer around the world says, I want you, Lobster Inc., to make training for my internal employees, Lobster Inc. will say, OK, do you want to have it just for yourself or can everyone else have it? And that also I think it's down to a price or something. And they say, no, everyone else can have it. So then you make it for, let's say, Jumeirah Group, but then everyone else gets it. So all the new courses are coming into that subscription. Again, just like Netflix. When Vox puts out a new movie or Paramount puts out a new movie, we all have access to it. Lobster Inc. is the same. So I cannot say right now they have those brand new technology programs on it, but I know they're creating it with the industry partners, right? And everyone who has a subscription will have access to that. Yeah. Very good. Fantastic. Perry, have you got any closing comments or questions for John? Turn your mic on, Perry. No, no, no sound, Perry. Perry. There we go. I've got a, hello? Can you yep, got hear me? Again. Sorry, you've, you're frozen. Ah, I'm back. Okay, good. Now, I just had a seen a bit of an unstable connection today. Um, Joe, perhaps you could just run through the, um, one of the, I think, has is, is come up again and again. I'm just reading through some of the questions in the, in, in the Q&A that's come up here. Um, it said, do you think there are particular um skills that are now needed applying for a job amidst the pandemic what are the chances of being hired i think that goes to the overall discussion around upskilling and credentialing and micro certifications and i believe that that is the quickest way to make the change right not everyone can go and do another bachelor's or another master's so you can upskill so one heavy heavy focus on health and safety if you can come in and say i have taken training on health and safety, I understand COVID-19 regulations, every single employee in the hotel is gonna to have to know that kind of thing, right? And so you're coming in just with an extra advantage. And I would highly encourage any of the academics listening to get those courses into the programs. Yes, Lobster Inc has some, because they're actually owned by Ecolab, largest health and training provider in the world, right? But that's gonna be critical. And I think it's also a unique touch point and talking point for the students, right? Sir, I know the pandemic is, uh, is we'll say the vaccines out there, but it's still an issue. We all need to have health and safety training. So I've taken this course, simple certification, but bam, there it is, right? So health and safety is gonna be one thing. But another thing I think is gonna be um, really the human element. I strongly believe that hospitality employers or employees will be seen in a different light after pandemic because they're not just giving a service, they're giving a comfort and a safety. We never thought about employees actually looking after our health. We really never did, didn't we? We thought, ah, housekeeping cleans the rooms and it's fine. Every single employee is thinking about, was this surface clean? Was this guest checked in properly? Was the restaurant clean the right way? And the guests now know that. It's visual in the way they present thing. This table was just clean. And it's visual in how the, uh, the employee's wearing a mask. And it's visual in the company policies before you check in. So health and safety. That's just going to be my single point, but the most important point, get those courses, single short courses on your CV. Very good. <clears throat> absolutely. Thank you very much for your, your, your thoughts, John. And I think uh, absolutely uh, extremely relevant to our, our, our audience and to uh, the people that join us every week for 30 minute talks. 
I, can I take this opportunity again, just to thank you very much for a very interesting presentation, very informative presentation, thought provoking, because there's been a number of questions come through that we've been dealing with quite nicely. Uh, any closing comments from yourself, Andy? Yeah, I know. Thank you. I agree. It was an excellent presentation. And for me, I learned a lot about Hosco too. You know, I know I've been aware of it, but since I'm I'm retired, I don't really look for jobs anymore. So Andy, you can join. There's academics there too. Why not? <laughs> that's a scary crowd to hang around with. So this deep yeah. around with these boys here. But uh, that you know, we 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 enjoy having people who are in the industry, and I think it's it's good for you that bring that that academic and the industry together. And I think it's a great great platform for our students and and for the academics too. Thanks, John. Uh, I know uh, Perry um, has got a bit of lag. But no, John. Thanks. Thanks very much for for sharing. I think. For many students, this is a very challenging time. There are so many new opportunities out there. As you said, there are some silver linings to COVID. We had a show a couple of weeks ago where we were focusing on virtual internships. And I think that also gave some great insights into the opportunities and the, and the variety of those virtual internships. So I think for many students, there are other options out there than we may have ever thought about before. So thanks again so much for, for coming on the 30 minute talks and uh, sharing uh, that with our community. Thanks again. Thank thanks you. very much, Perry. And uh, on that note, everybody give uh, John a great virtual round of applause. Thank you very much, John. And um, let's move on. We've got a, We've got a few more things to finish up the show today. Um, don't leave us, John. S stick around. We've got a few more minutes to go. Andy, can we uh, just thank, uh, uh, as we know, academic partners who are a very important part of our show? We always like to thank the University of Santo Tomas, one of our earliest partners, Sunway University, LPU. And LPU is responsible for, for a lot of things in helping the program. And one just one issue uh, that we need to let everybody know is the certificates this week will be a little bit of a delay as we've had a little technical issue. So again, uh, the certificates from last week will be coming out. Just be patient. Uh, our friends at NKUHT, they're having an event this weekend and we're, we'll be promoting that on our flyer uh, where they're having a conference. Uh, Joji Iligan in D Davao, and of course, the Tourism Industry Board Foundation, Inc., uh, some of our many academic partners. Thank you uh, also to CARREP, the Council of Hotel and Restaurant Educators of the Philippines, Silver Mountain School of Hotel Management, the University of the Bahamas, and our friend uh, Vic down there, uh, the ICE, the International Center of Excellence in Tourism and Hospitality Education, and of course, uh, Shidler College of Business, the School of uh, Travel Industry Management, from the University of Hawaii, Hawaii, Manoa. Once again, everybody, thank you very much to all of our academic partners. I'm hoping that we've covered everybody off. I don't think we've forgotten anybody. And again, thank you to Hosco and John, who's presented today. Andy, we, as always, we, we prepared a number of shows in advance, and this is our show for next week. Why can't, uh, can you uh, give us a little bit of an introduction to Professor Mushtaq? Yeah, we're looking forward to next week. Uh, Professor Mushtaq is one of our old friends. Uh, Perry and I worked with him for, for several years in Malaysia, and he is now the, the provost and CEO of Herat Wat University, a famous university in Malaysia. Uh, and he is an excellent, excellent speaker. He's written three books. He, he gives YouTube presentations. And when I do the advertisement this week, I'm going to link one of his YouTube presentations on the flyer so you can watch the watch him in action before the show next week. And he's gonna give about, talk about 30 minute history of human jobs. And he's an engineer, so it's a unique twist on how we view work. So I know next week is gonna be a wonderful presentation and one not to miss. Absolutely, thanks Dr. Andy. And I think that's a great follow up to today's presentation. And as you say, one not to miss. And um, Next week and our certificates of attendance. Uh, Andy, do you want to talk that through as well? Um, I know Perry's got a few challenges with his connection. Yeah, Alan, actually we, the certificate is always, we want everyone to complete uh, their certificates, uh, but we need you to provide three key learnings. Uh, and actually right now you can see that there's a QR code on there and you could use that to access it. And I'm gonna get you the, a copy of the link, which I'll put into the chat box on the next slide. So Alan, why don't you go through a couple of those things while I find that for everyone. Absolutely, uh, thanks Andy. Uh, don't forget that uh, as with every week uh, after the show, we run, the, um, we run basically the opportunity for all of you to complete the survey. Um, so if you haven't yet participated in one of the surveys, what you need to do is tell us the three key learnings from today's program. And as John has presented a whole number of thoughts about uh, HOSCO, the future of, it, uh, of uh, work in the industry, the networking in the industry, your personal brands, all those sorts of things. There's a number of key learnings that I've taken from today already. 
please share with us your learnings from today's program. Fill out the, the survey and qualify for one of our certificates of attendance. And uh, usually, uh, as, uh, as we've mentioned already, the certificate takes uh, about uh, seven days or, uh, to, to get to you. There may be a few delays this week because of the technical challenges, but believe us, uh, we know how important these certificates are to you, so they will not be forgotten. The QR code is there, and as Dr. Andy has already mentioned, it'll also be shared for you in the chat function in uh, Zoom today. Yep, I just put it in a chat function and get those certificates done, please. Fantastic. So th there it is. Use what you learn to improve yourself and our industry from the 30 minute talks. So on that note, everybody, um, thank you very much again for joining uh, 30 minute talks, uh, another edition. And um, uh, Perry, why don't you say goodbye? Well, yeah, again, thanks very much for, for joining us. Thanks very much, John, again. It's been great having you on the show. Thanks so much for sharing, talking about that community uh, approach. Uh, the Hosca and the availability of those resources through Nobsing. That's, I, I think, great information for students to know about and the opportunities of, of, of virtual exchange. I'm really looking forward to hearing from uh, my former colleague, uh, Professor Mushtak, next week. Uh, as Andy said, he's written a number of books. One of my favourite ones is uh, Shoot the Boss. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that too. Uh, Dr. Andy, why don't you say goodbye? We'll be promoting that next week. And you could also stop by our website, uh, 30minutetalks.com. And there's a list you can register there. So it's easy for you to register now if you want to register. And we, we appreciate John coming all the way from Poland to join us today. And it was a great show and, and very informative. And we had a very, I know this was an internet provider uh, uh, power outage in the Philippines. So a lot of people might have not been able to show today. Uh, so it will, there will be a copy on our website and we always have a copy on YouTube too. So uh, for those people, tell your friends, they can watch the show uh, on those to get that information that John provided today. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Dr. Andy. And John, why don't you say goodbye to our participants for today? Thank you everybody for the opportunity to share HOSCO. If you have uh, any other questions, you go to hosco.com. That's where you can, of course, register for HOSCO. And if you are an academic listening uh, with a hotel, school, or department of hospitality, you can reach me at john at hosco.com. We can talk about HOSCO membership for your school. We can talk about Lobster Inc. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Best of luck and stay positive. The recovery is coming. Yeah. Thanks very much, John, and thanks again for your participation. And once again, everybody, thank you very much for joining another edition of 30 Minute Talks. Um, the, other, the only addition that I'd like to make uh, is multi-skilling. Uh, I think the future workforce will also be very multi-skilled. Make sure you're keeping safe, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you from myself, Alan Williams. Goodbye, everybody.